Hey you, get ready, get on your feet, get into gear and hit the street. Hey you, get moving, it's not too far, you're looking good, so come as you are. Hey you, you never know what you see when you do that door with the seven three. Never seen nothing, no, not like this place, never been, no, no way, not ever, no, never seen no place, no way, similar, not like seventy three. Hey you, get ready, get on your feet, get into gear and hit the street. It's you that we wanna see, so get down to seventy three. Get down to seventy three. Hey you, get down to seventy three. How now, brown cow? How now? It's nine o'clock. Well, can't you hear the chimes? Good morning, John. This is your nine o'clock call. I'm afraid it's half an hour late here. I got a wee bit caught up in the kitchen. I couldn't find the muesli anywhere, so I brought you some porridge. Now, come on, dear. It's time to get up. You were scheduled to be up at nine o'clock, you know. Get your skates on. Oh, dear, you've got your skates on. Listen, I hope you haven't chipped the end of that bed. Otherwise, it'll have to go on my list. Now, that's two units up and two units unaccounted for. Oh, dear. Morning. Oh, I mean, good morning. OK, yeah. What? Number six, repaint the fence. Number seven, remove ridiculous doggy doorbell. What? Oh, this is ridiculous. Morning. I don't believe it, you know. We've had a letter from the new landlord, Mr Birch, saying that we've got to do all these alterations and repairs to the house. Look, look. To be done forthwith as per contract. I didn't even know we had a contract. Oh, you've got the letter, Neil. That's good. But listen, you were scheduled to read that before your breakfast, you know, son. Mr Birch is very particular. Oh, he is, is he, Maisie? Fantastic. Right, great. Well, now then, um, let me see, Mr Birch. What else is on the list? Well, well, there's uh, the door. Have you done the door? No, bit? I haven't started that yet, Maisie. I'm afraid not. No. Uh, anyway, what I want to know is how he got to know about all this stuff in the first place. Well, I was having a little chat with him, you see. And I have to, listen, I have to tell you. that I was telling him about the iguanas. The man was tickled pink, honestly. You should have seen his face. And, oh, I warned him about the doorbell, so maybe that was why he mentioned it, you see. And, um, and what about the paint on <laughs> the fence? The fence. I was going yes. to tell you about that. You know, all right, Maisie, it was oh, you that did it, eh? Thank you very much. You've but, really but dropped us in it now, it haven't you? It will not take us a minute to get it fixed once we get going. You mean know? it'll not take me a minute to do it? Thank you, Maisie. You're a love. Listen, I think your tools are in the shed. Mum, we'll have a wee look for them. Come yeah, on, it's yeah. always me that has to do it, and it. Thank you, oh, you know goodness. who your friends are. Well, listen, it's all very well for you. You don't have to go about looking like a reject from British Caledonian. Here, listen, this drain pipe looks awful sugarly. Maybe I'll uh, put uh, that on the uh, list uh, just to uh, be uh, safe. Can't you do something useful and stop making lists, eh? But you see, I can't do anything useful until I make a list of useful things to do. Maisie, why don't you just do what you're paid to do around here for once in your life, eh? The cleaning. The cleaning? Well, who got out of bed on the wrong side this morning, oh, then? No, I can't Good morning, you? Maisie. I don't know what's getting into the men in this neighbourhood lately, you know. Oh. I mean, moan, moan, moan. I know. <laughs> well, I'm used to it from Martin, but it's tragic seeing Neil going the same way. Who is the for inspection? Inspection? Have you got the council on? I'm just marshalling your troops on the southern flank, General. Cheerio, Uncle I'm afraid there's no time to explain, Maisie. I'll see you later. Well, listen, I'm scheduled for a break at half past ten, so maybe we can have a wee cup of tea. By the way, your new uniform looks very efficient. Oh, it's Mr Butch's idea. It's very becoming. Aye, but what's it becoming? Around the ragged rock, the ragged rock, rock, around, around the ragged rock. Look at this, look. Boy, have we got problems. A letter from the new landlord, Mr Birch, demanding we do all these repairs and alterations on the house. Look at this. Okay. Forthwith, according to contract. I mean, look at this, Dawn. Dethatch the roof. Get rid of the iguanas in the bath. Repaint the fence. Look, remove ridiculous doggy doorbell. Well, go on, Bennett. When are we going to get a chance to do all this? Yeah, I suppose I'm going to have to make a start on it, aren't I? I think you had better get that, Neil. You OK? OK? Yeah. Oh, Mrs Clutterbuck, so delighted to meet you, I'm sure. OK, go. Ah, oh, oh, Simon, John. Morning. Oh, listen, I'm awfully sorry, but I've had to move all your equipment from the hall into the yard. It was a little bit restricted, you know. So, uh, if you'd like to go through to the Fine. yard, I'll see you in a minute. Straight down there, straight yeah. down the bottom. Right. Turn left and... Yeah. Uh, um, can I have a word in your ear, old boy? Listen, uh, I don't quite know how to say this to you. So I'm just going to give it to you straight. Your days are numbered. Simon, I 
and Joanna, that's absolutely splendid. Yes, I think you'll find the extensive patio just through that door and out the back. Okay, cheerio, okay. nice to have met you. Bye. Bye. Super. What? Okay. Okay, so, oh, what jolly super people those. Jolly super. Something wrong with your mouth? No. Then why are you talking like that then? Well, actually, I'm going to a posh dinner and dance tonight and I'm rehearsing. Oh, yeah? Who are you going with? Well, you know that bloke I met on the M4 cafe? Yeah. Well, not only does it turn out that he's a truck driver, it turns out that he owns a truck. Turn out that he owns 50 trucks. Stinking Rich asked me to a posh dinner and dance, doesn't he? I can't do it. You haven't even met him yet. Oh, Dawn, we've known him for so long. I said you haven't met him, Neil. No, I don't mean him. I'm talking about the little doggy doorbell. I mean, he's part of the furniture, isn't he? He's traditional round here. Yeah. I, I mean, just think of all the, all the famous people that, that have come to the house and pressed his little head to come yeah. in. That doggy has got every right to be in this house, as much right as, as the thatched fence, yeah. the, the paint on the fence, yeah. the thatched roof out there, the iguanas in the bath, the tunnel to Mr Patel's. And Dennis? Yeah. Don't cry now. with the Mitchells, you said. Let's see the Grand Canyon, you said. Don't worry about Dennis, you said. Miss Mitchell. Ah, uh, good old reliable Dennis. At least we've still got him, eh? Good. Actually, you know, it could be the sound of the doorbell that offends the landlord as opposed to the look of it. Maybe I should change the sound. Well, I'd better disconnect it before I do anything. No life to live in, and there's no time for giving. What are you doing? Well, I'm just loosening up for tonight's dancing at the dinner and dance, aren't I? Oh, don't be silly. All those posh people don't dance like that, do they? Where do they dance in? Well, they're going to be doing ballroom dancing. Look, I'll show you how it's done. You sit there, right? Because all the ladies get on one side of the room there, and then yeah. all the gentlemen get on the other side, and then all the gentlemen come swanning across, mm -hmm. and they say, You dancing? Who's asking? I'm asking. I'm dancing. Dee 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 dee. This is not ballroom dancing. This is how they do it on Come Dancing. Neil. Ow! And dip. Well, I'm glad to see you behaving more like a gentleman, Neil. Well, at least trying to be. Why are you dancing? Well, I'm going to a posh dinner and dance tonight, and he reckons I'm going to have to ballroom dance. Oh, Dawn, how lovely. Yes, foxtrots and tangos. I remember when Martin and I took lessons. Hey, would you like some tips, love? Oh, I'd love some, Hazel. Right, we need some music. Well, I've got Roger Whittaker. That's about the nappies we got. Oh, it will do perfect. Okay, right. come on in. Right. Oh. I think I'll stick to doorbell maintenance. Oh. Now, where's that fuse box? That's... So that's what was causing that smell. I must tell Mr. Butcher we've had to leave. I think he was worried about it. Eh, uh, doorbell, Neil. Have you done it? I was just going to go out oh, there. Oh, Neil, come on. You should have done it. But now, otherwise, I can't tick it off on my list. And I like ticking things off on the list. It's very good. Oh, eh. See that in there? Could you do something about it? It's making a terrible smell. We've got some nice cha-cha music here. Oh, that's lovely, because there's nothing impresses a man more than a girl who can do a good cha-cha, love. Okay. Right, the thing to remember is the man always leads. Right, so who's the man, then? Well, I will be, so just right. follow me, darling. Okay. Ready? And with right, left, cha-cha-cha. Right, left. Cha cha cha, round chin up, cha cha cha, with poison grace, cha cha cha. Oh, you're doing fine, darling. But it's not just the dancing, Hazel. What am I going to do when it gets to eating? How am I going to know which knife and fork to pick up for all them courses? Oh, that's easy, Dawn, love. You just watch what everybody else does and follow them. That's what I did. Well, have you been to one of these posh doors before, then? Oh, yes, many a time. Now, hands together. That's right. One, two, cha cha cha. Martin and I used to go to the allotment holders' dances regularly. Mind you, we haven't been out together anywhere together for a long, long time. Has he been lately? Well, you know, I went home to my mother last week, love. What did she say? Well, she told me not to be a silly girl and to come home and sort things out with him. What did he do when he got home? Was he pleased to see her? Not really, love. He piled up all the furniture in the lounge and was re-enacting the siege of Mafeking. I tell you, I got really worried, Dawn, when he tried to court-martial me for desertion. Oh, do you think he's safe to be left alone, Hazel? Probably not, darling. I'd better go back home and see to him. Right, now you've got the idea now. You carry on, remember. Poison, please. Okay. One, 
Two, cha cha cha. Oh, Ninian, what delightful fun this is. Two, okay, yeah. So it's, it's an exercise machine. That's right. It's incredible. It's a stutter, isn't it? I've never seen one like that. Looks very exciting, wasn't it? Would you mind just holding that high life of a wee shot? Oh, yeah. What do we have here then? The super efficient Maisie McConaughey delegating her work, giving her lists no, no, to no, other no, people. I, I was doing it with scientific experiment. You'll have just having a wee shot to see oh, what yeah, it's, it's like. Oh, yeah, it's on your list then, is it? Uh, well, it will be just as soon as I write it down. It's going to be number 19. And what happened to 1 to 18? Have you done them? I'll go and check them now, sir. I think you should. Sorry about Maisie, you have to take it with a pinch of salt. Now then, Simon, I've got it all set up for you, mate. It's looking great, it's looking brilliant. What is it? It's a gyroscopic exercise machine called the Aerotrim. Of course it is. What does it do? Well, Joanna will show you if you like. Go on then, Joanna. Hop on. So what are you going to do then, Simon? Joanna's going to clip herself into the machine yeah. by rotating a ring down there on her feet to right. make sure they're nice and tight. And then when I pull the bars out, she will rock her body backwards and forwards, which will make the machine turn round and round. Now, it's an exercise machine. That's correct. How's she going to exercise herself in it if she's just going to be rocking around there? Well, she space? exercises by pushing forwards, backwards, and pulling all around in every way she possibly can. It's just total muscle tone whilst actually rotating around within the machine. Go on, then. Let's see you do it, Joanna. See how she goes. Good luck. So what's she doing now? Just getting it warmed up? That's right, yes. She's just yeah. taking it backwards and forwards, nice and steady, getting some nice rotation throughout the machine. You don't actually have to move yourself much, no, do you? No, no, it's, it's very, very relaxing. It's nice and steady, nothing really hard. It's not like pulling weights in a gymnasium or anything like that. I should imagine that's quite good for people whose movements are restricted. Very much so, yes. In fact, when we had, took it to an exhibition, mm -hmm. we had some blind children in it, and they've been very, very pleased with the, with the machine itself. And what's it actually made of? Surely it's safe. Oh, it's very, very safe indeed, yes. It's made of high tensile steel. We rather think it's, um, it's engineered rather than being manufactured. Who invented it? It was invented by a chap in Germany who couldn't exercise at a normal physical capacity. And he drew out the design and it's taken three years to get to this stage now. She looks like she's having loads of fun. Oh, she's having a tremendous time in there. <laughs> You're right, Joanna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it as fast as she can go or can she really spin Oh, she can really spin it, it round. There? Yeah, she'll begin to wind it up even harder now. Really giving it some whirl. It's amazing how little movement she has to do to actually get the thing going. Very much so, yes. It takes a minimum amount of effort if you want it to, or it can be as extremely physical at the same time. All right, Joanna, you look like you're really enjoying yourself, but I'm going to stop you. Come here, let's get out of it. What do you have to do? Just stop her. Yes, yeah, she'll just bend, her, bend at the knees there and lower her body down into the machine, at which point then it comes to a gentle halt, and we lock the bars across. Like that, and now she can undo herself. I wanted to go something like this myself, where would I go to do that? At the moment, there's only this machine in the country and another one down in Torquay. Mm. But in a little bit of time, we feel they're going to be all over the country, in gymnasiums, health clubs, amusement parks, pleasure beaches. They should be just about everywhere. You a little bit of time, it's going to catch on? It's going to catch on in a very, very big way. There's no doubt about that. Now, obviously, it's, it's good for getting fit and all that sort of stuff. But was it fun? It's brilliant, Is yeah. it? Tell me what you're feeling when you're spinning round there. Uh, you do anything you want to do, basically. Yeah. It does whatever you want to do, it's up to your body. Do you go dizzy? No, not at all. It's like being in space. It's the closest thing. Well, uh, to, uh, I wouldn't fancy having a go in it myself. I must admit, I'd hate to get stuck go upside here. down. No. Oh, and Neil, the doorbell, son, the doorbell. Yeah, uh, Maisie, yeah. Uh, look, I've got something that might interest you, Simon. Do the bit. Uh, excellent for bunions. Oh, bunions? Good for keeping fit. Oh, my bunions that, you know. have been giving me goats, and that's, that's it. Head through it. Uh. You get in there. I thought the boy said it was for exercise. You're, You're right. Well, that's a struggle. That's it. A bit for bunions here, wasn't it? No, it's, it's good stuff, this, Maisie. Now, you just close your eyes. Close my eyes. And relax. Oh, you look, there's a bar up. That's it. You hold on to that and relax. Oh, and just count slowly to ten. Relax, relax. One. Yeah. To yourself. Eight, two. Three. Oh, no. There you are. What do you think of that, eh? Shins! Oh, my bunions don't feel any different. Listen, <laughs> what happens now? Well, actually, uh, we go for a nice wee cup of tea and a biscuit. Oh, wee cup of tea and a biscuit. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, Neil! No, Neil! No, oh, Neil! Right then, uh, tea, coffee, chocolate? All three, please. Oh, oh fine. Well, uh, can you help yourself? I'm just going to answer the doorbell. Oh, funny little doggy. You're fastened by a screw. I wonder how you manage when you want to use the loo. Morning. Oh, uh, do you think I could have your papers, please? Bob? Do you think I could have your papers, your newspapers? Well, who are you? Oh, uh, the poet, and I need some papers. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I've come to see Dawn, actually, but I want to write some poems from... Oh, well, yeah, you better get in and see Dawn. Yeah, in there, mate. Here you go. Here. Squire! Yeah! Ten! Eight! 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 Eight!
morning. Stand your attention when I'm talking to you. Hey? Am I hurting you, laddie? No. Well, I should be. I'm standing on your ear. Get it cut. You are a little man. You're a disgrace to the British Army. I oh, hope you want to charge me. Corporal Edwards, you are improperly dressed. I will have you on a charge. Just calm down, Martin. Keep your voice down, Martin. Remember, you're in a public street. People are beginning to talk. Silence in the ranks. Sorry, Mrs. Miller. Look, Martin, I know what you'd like. Let's go down to Mr. Patel's and buy some of your favourite gingerbread men. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Fall in, no gingerbread men, for inspection! <laughs> Oh, it's only Martin. No, oh, is he normally like that? Well, he's normally, but this week he seems to be a bit worse. Oh, dear. What have you got all those newspapers for? Well, I want to write a poem from one of them, sometime. You're going to write a poem from the newspapers? That's it. I'll get an idea for inspiration and write a poem from the story. And in fact, well, I can show you, because I've got one that I did a while ago, if you yeah, like. Yeah, I'd like to hear okay. one, yeah. Well, this is something that was in the Daily Mirror, and it said, Sweet Tooth, Animal psychiatrists are trying to cure a dog which had chewed its way through curtains, carpets and a three-piece suite at its owner's home in Bristol. Right. Yeah, exactly. The hungry dog. Right. It devoured the curtains and carpets, but that wasn't enough to eat, and pretty soon it had chewed its way through a tasty three-piece suite. You'd think that would be sufficient, but no, this dog wanted more, and after half an hour there was nothing left of the floor. The dog was quite insatiable and chewed for all he was worth, right through the house foundations to the centre of the earth. The rate he kept on going, you would think the beast had wings, and two days later he emerged just north of Alice Springs. The hungry beast kept going, like a greyhound in a race, and gobbled his way through the stratosphere to the depths of outer space. This dog is a phenomenon beyond the scope of vets. The more it keeps on wolfing, the bigger that it gets. He's out there in the distance, gobbling up the stars with the vigour shown by schoolboys chomping chocolate bars <laughs> at the rate this dog is going. I think I've found, my friend, the secret of the way the universe will end. Is this what you do for a job, then, write, writing poems from newspapers? Well, part-time job, and part-time actually work in a hospital as well, in uh, Maystone. And you just take an article from the, the newspaper, do you, a story? Yeah, and if it gives me a good idea, then I'll write something on it. So show, show, show me what you mean, like... Well, OK, a more recent example is something yeah. that was actually in yesterday's paper, and I thought I'd write something on this. Now, if you see here, it says, Ref runs off with the ball. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, what happened was this referee didn't get paid for refereeing a match, so he actually took the football home with him. <laughs> as he <laughs> as sort of wages. As payment, right. yeah. yeah. So I've done a little one on that, which I'll read to you. OK. If I can find it. So this is called A Bad Example, The Effect on Public Services. The fireman who found that his wages were late drove a fire engine back to the housing estate. The pilot, who heard that his payslip was torn, promptly landed the Concorde slap bang on his lawn. <laughs> there were tanks on the road and a train in the yard, while the road to the shops was effectively barred by a stranded Polaris. And you see, this was all because of the ref who ran off with the ball. It's a really interesting way of writing poetry, isn't it? Because a lot of people think poetry is boring. Well, I think quite a lot of it is a bit boring, actually, but there are a lot of poets now that are trying to do something more entertaining and direct. Do you go around performing your poetry? Oh, yeah, as much as I can. And do you do it in unusual ways? Well, I'll try to. Like uh, what? Well, masks. Masks? Yeah. Right, I'll give you an example of a mask. Yeah. Because this is written about hospital porter, so I've got a mask. I'm not saying that all hospital porters look like this, but I think <laughs> so, so one hospital one, porter one somewhere do, yeah. might do. Yeah. And I'll just give you the beginning of this poem. OK. So this is the mask, and it's called What a Blimmin' Life. The blimmin' laundry's late again. It's always blimmin' late. Well, now I'm blimmin' busy and he'll have to blimmin' wait. <laughs> it's not based on your hospital porter, is it? I'm not saying. <laughs> what else have you got in these bags here? Synthesizer. Yeah? That you use that good? to form your poetry, do you? Yeah, like, so let's look at that one. Yeah. Here oh, it is. It's a little one. I've never seen one so little. Well, it's got its own speaker and amplifier built in. And the thing yeah. is, it's quite lightweight, if you feel, so I can actually take it oh, around it with really me. Oh, it is really yeah. And this one's about an old hippie. 
I'm not saying where I got the inspiration for this one from. When I was a teenage hippie in a dull suburban town, hanging round outside the chippy saying, man, it brings me down. When my life was psychedelic and my aim was dropping out, when grey suits were just a relic, when Pink Floyd were first about. That's a great idea, isn't it? And listen, I just remembered, I read somewhere about you writing a letter to John Betjeman. Did you do that? I did send him, when he was alive, a copy of uh, one of my booklets, yeah. yeah. And what did he say back? Well, he was very kind. He wrote back and he said, I don't know what a poet is, but I know you are one. Cool, but you're well chuffed, weren't oh, you? over the moon, Listen, yeah. Charles, now you're here, I'd just like to ask you a little favour. Yeah? Well, what I want you to do is... Well, here it is, then. See what you think of this as the new sound for the doorbell. That's terrible. It's terrible. It's boring, isn't it? Jesus. Maybe we'll get used to it, eh? Let's... It might grow on again. It's not getting any better, certainly not. Yes. Who gave it all that to ring that bell? I did. Right, 12 mile route march for you, lady. Meet me in full kit in five minutes. Martin. Sergeant Major Edwards to you. Sergeant Major Edwards. What's going on? Oh, oh, no, not again. I turn my back on you for two minutes in Mr Patel's and you give me the slip. I was on manoeuvres. Look, Martin. I've got your gingerbread rations here. Why don't we yomp back to 75 and I'll brew up a nice billy can of tea for us. Squad, this, this, And what do you think you're doing, you horrible little woman? Well, according to Neil, I'm curing my bunions. Well, there's no time for that. You need to look lively. Come on, house, paper. Stay up. Stay up. Oh, James! Hey, you. Tell me, Mrs. Clutterbuck, how is your brown cow now? Oh, she's stupid. I can't talk about cows all evening. Yes? Is John in? Yeah, it is me. Can I come in? Yeah. Oh, I mean, no. Hang on, I haven't got my zip done up. In fact, you can do it up for me. Close your eyes. Hey. Over here, over here. Oh, Neil. Where are you? Here. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, we've got problems on our hands. Bad news. Oh, I know. What with the doorbell and the tunnel to Mr. Patel? No, 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 as well as that. See, Martin's going around trying to recruit everybody in the army. He thinks he's some sort of sergeant major. So what do you think, then? Well, honestly, I, th I think he's gone a bit loopy. What do you think of me dress? I, I can't see it. Open your eyes. You look like Joan Collins or something out of Dallas or a dynasty. Oh, uh, Dawn, that's just not you, is it? Yeah, I mean, you're normally roller skates and tatty hairdos. What? To a dinner and dance, Neil? Yeah, casual, you know. I mean, just because you're going out to a posh place doesn't mean to say you can't be yourself, does it? <coughs> I'll get it. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Actually, I don't know if this whole dinner and dance thing's really me. This guy in or what? Okay. Come on. Gary Moore, oh, how you doing, hi. mate? All right, hi, lads, all right. Hi, hi, hi. I'll have the new bell. It's good. It, oh, well, actually, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> between you and me, uh, it's up for the chop. But well, say nothing, eh? All right, say Come nothing. Come to the in the cellar. Yeah, yep. yeah. All right, through there, lads. Straight down the bottom, turn right. There you see. Hear what the lads said? They really like it. We really like it. And even if the landlord doesn't like it, we might be able to find a little job for you inside. Have you ever held a toothbrush? I can't apologise enough for what Martin did to Great comrade, great job. He's not himself this oh, morning, I'm afraid. Martin. I have to admit, I do wish I hadn't had that sick and kipper to my breakfast this oh, morning. No. But actually, that's the most fun I've had all day. Well, I'm glad you look at it in that light, Mrs. Oh, Very you decent of you. You know, it's not a happy house. It certainly isn't. It's this new landlord. I mean, look, he's given me this stupid uniform, calls me a domestic hygienist, and he's given me this big list of things that I've got to get them to do. Well, that's no my way. You know I don't like bossing people about, and I'm very fond of the boys and girls. Well, the 
cheek of the man. I mean, have you gone and told them? What? I, I've got no time to go and tell them, Mrs. Edwards. I'm half an hour behind with my list as it is. Well, never mind your list, Maisie. First things first, and you go in there and you tell Don and Neil. Oh, uh, you might be right. Of course I'm right. Oh. Off you go. Now, yeah, that's much better. Much more me. <sighs> Don! Don! A wee minute, love. I just need a word with you, dear. Oh, hang on a minute, Maisie, will you? Okay, dear. How's Martin Heisel? Oh, Don, love, I'm nearly at my wit's end. Do you know, I've left him in our kitchen, lining up gingerbread men and putting them through army manoeuvres. Oh, but I don't know what's causing it, love. Perhaps he's allergic to something. Well, he's certainly allergic to me. Lacking in his diet something, Lacking. isn't there? I don't know what, but... Zinc! That's what it'll be. Zinc! I was reading an article about it in the Coropodists the other day. It's... Terribly frightening what a lack of zinc can do to a man, you know. We'll need to go and get him some tablets. I don't think Mr. Patel sells zinc. But I know the very place, Mrs. Edwards, you just come with me. Right. Hey, listen, girls, before we go, I just want your opinion on what I'm wearing tonight's dinner and dance. Dawn, love, you can't go to a dinner dance dressed like that. Oh, no, dear, no. You need a nice frock. Oh, your best frock, Dawn. Hmm. Keep still. Oh, shoot your eyes, one little tug should do it. Uh, it's coming. Neil, love, haven't you got anything better to do this morning than play with doorbells? The landlord said you've got to take it off. Uh, that's right, it was number seven on the list. Keep up the good work, son. You're really heartless, you are. That's it, one more. Yeah, they are, that didn't hurt a thing, did it? Oh, eh? how are you doing? That's I'm alright, mate. That's cute, isn't it? Oh, great. What the? I've just taken it off with the crowbar. Charles, oh, nice to see you, you in your car. Nice right. to see you. I don't believe it. You just don't give up, do you, eh? All right, just come this way. All Look, right. I haven't let anyone go anywhere in this oh, stuff. Great. It's all right. Do you get everything you needed down the shop? Yeah, sorted great out. Stuff. Great stuff. Oh, by the way, this is Chad Jackson, 1986's UK mixing champion, but not oh. 1987's. Afraid not. So, what happened then? Well, the equipment went a bit wrong for me on the day, so uh, I didn't get it. But I came second, though, so... Oh, that's not, so not bad. too bad. No, but does right. that mean you can't enter the World Championship? Well, thankfully, I'm in the World, because the World Champion from last year, a guy from New York named Cheese... Cheese? Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's not in it, he's, he's not entering it, because you should be automatically entered in the next year, you know, but he's refused. I don't know why, you know. That's he's funny, won it isn't once, it? So, you know, does that mean you can go in his place? That means I was runner-up, so I take his place. Cool, so that was still lucky, it, wasn't it? Now. Listen, what exactly is mixing, then? Mixing? Well, it's sort of mixing one record into another without any break in the middle and keeping the beat up, you know, like uh, normal disc jockeys play a record and go, yep, 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 yeah, yep yeah, in yeah, between, yeah. play another one, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mixing is just playing a record and then playing another one but keeping the beat going all the way through so it and sounds no like one long record. No yapping at yeah. all. No. And you need special equipment, do you? Yeah, well, two turntables is preferable and a mixer here which you can uh, use that deck in one fader here and the other deck. Yeah. When is so. this World Championship? Uh, 9th of March at the Royal Albert Hall. Well, that'd be nice, you know, wouldn't it? You're going to give us a little demo about what you're going to be doing then? Yeah, why not? Okay. All right. Pop the beat, the, pop the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, the jump beat up. Wrong beat. Oh, 
and your feet on it and stuff like that. Well, it's a different uh, way of doing it, isn't it, really? Yeah, well, I used to just mix using my hands and uh, I was entering a competition last year and I thought to myself, what can I do to make it more interesting? Because you're just doing that, you know, with your hands. It certainly makes it more interesting, boring. doesn't it? Yeah, make it a bit more visual. Does everyone so. do it like that? No. Uh, I'm the only one, as far as I know, but there's uh, other guys that I know who've used different things. There's a guy I know of who's used a kitchen sink. And, uh, a kitchen sink? Yeah, use anything you want, really. What's the most unusual thing you've ever used? Uh, I used a TV once, I think, so... Cool, that wasn't was that really heavy? heavy? A little bit, yeah. But Where does the mixing you... come from? Uh, well, it started in uh, New York, I think, uh, as far away as ten years ago, I think. And uh, it was just came from DJs who got sick of talking in between records, so they decided to mix the records in between each other, make it more interesting, you know. It, can anyone do it, or is it just people like you? Uh, well, there's lots of kids that I know who started it up. It's like a brand new hobby. I mean, yeah. there's hundreds of kids that I know of who get two turntables and a mixer and uh, they get them in the bedroom and they practice all the bashed out record players. Yeah, and make and... cassettes and stuff like that. It's really growing. I don't it's suppose nice. there's any chance of me having a little go. Yeah, well, I've not? always wanted to, yeah. you know, do that yeah. scratching bit, you know. Right, we'll get a sound. Okay. Right, go on. Stop it. Yeah, stop it. That's it. Chuck a car. In rhythm. In rhythm. <laughs> in rhythm. <laughs> Sorry, come in. Sit down, try your nose. <laughs> try your nose. Yeah, why not? Go on. Oh, no. Go on. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> no, I don't really think so. I, I, listen, Chad, um, yeah. if you were going to a posh dinner and dance, yeah. what sort of thing would you wear? Me? Yeah. Well, uh, I think I'd probably just wear my jeans and my trainers. And, would you? Yeah. But I'm a bit uh, weird, you know. Right. <laughs> Listen, you don't want a cup of coffee, do you? Please, yeah. I'll make you one. Thanks. Oh, really? Do you think so? Well, why don't you look at it this way? You won't have all those grubby fingers pressing your head anymore. You're not going to have to hang out, the, uh, out there in all that cold weather. Oh, it's freezing out there. You're going to love it in the bathroom. Anyway, you hang round here until I come back and I'll fix you up. I'm just going out for a little walk. See you later. Where are you going? I'm just going out for a walk. What about all those jobs you had to do? Well, I've taken the doorbell off. And what's going in its place? Oh, I'll sort something out when I come back. Uh, Neil! Did you just say you were going out? Yeah. Where are you going? The marshes, why? Nothing, nothing. Is that allowed? Yeah. See you later. Yeah, see you later. Going to the marshes, Neely Wheely. Got another little thinky winky coming. Hello, Erica. Yeah, you know what we were talking about yesterday? Yeah, well, he's just gone out, down the marshes. You do your best to ring me back. That's great. OK, bye. Fantastic. Now, coffee for Chad. So, yeah. I've got a problem. You want me to write this poem about this bloke? I yeah. don't know anything about him at all. Oh, so you want me to tell you a little bit about him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's no problem. Right. Well, he's sort of tall, dark, handsome, chunky, um, hairy chest, intelligent sense. It's sort of average, really. Average? Yeah. So, um, anything more? You want some more? Well, We've been losing a lot. Squad! Better lift! Quick! That way for it! Much! Squad! Hop! Do that button up, you horrible little man! All right then. This is it. This is where they're keeping him. Starlag 73. Right then. You all know your jobs. Now, synchronise watches. And very gently, away we go. <gasps> Pray that you don't fall prisoner, men. Look at this terrible instrument of torture. Size 10 feet. I think they're a size 10. Actually, I didn't ask him. It's not the sort of thing you ask someone, is it, on the first date? You no, know, you think it's size, size 10? Yeah, about size 10, yeah. I mean, you can put that in your poem if you like, but I don't think it's that interesting. Right, what... OK. OK. I think that's about enough. Oh, all right. great. All right, then, Thanks Charles. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye for now. Yeah, see you, Charles. Right. Coffee for Chad. All right, take no prisoners. You are completely surrounded. What are you playing at? I demand to know where you're keeping him. Keeping who? Um, uh, whoever it is you're keeping. Martin Edwards, probably. Who are you? Martin, it's me, Dawn. Dawn? Right, attack at Dawn! No! Don't you touch that phone. 
It might be headquarters. Ha! Well, listen. My men are all trained in unarmed combat and they'll be listening to every single word, so be careful. OK. Hello? You sorted it out. That's fantastic. Thanks ever so... No, I can't talk at the moment. I'm a bit held up. All right, then. Bye. They're going to surprise him on the marshes. The supplies are on the march? No, they're going to surprise him on the marsh. Oh, they're going to surprise him on the marsh? Ah, this is the life. Man alone with nature. It's really peaceful out here on the estuary. Oh, look at the size of that. Actually, I remember Bilotti saying it's pretty good for bird spotting around there. I'd see some good rare ones today. Oh, there's a flock of them over there. Can't quite see what they are, though. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. Oh, it's so fresh out here. Better than being stuck in the house all day. What's that? The wind through the trees. <laughs> Feeling you've been. No, don't be stupid. Oh, looks a bit dodgy now. Telegram for you. Have you? Hang on, what's that? Well, you've heard of a telegram. Yeah. And you've heard of a kissogram. Yeah. Well, we're your local radio station, and this is an Invictogram. I know you. Erica Longdon's the name. Erica Longdon, you're off the radio, aren't you? That's right. Oh, great. So what's this all about, then? Well, normally we'd send them out if it's your birthday. Yeah. Which it's not. No. But a little bird on roller skates. Dawn Lodge. <laughs> That's the one. Told me you've always had a burning ambition to be on the radio. So we brought the radio car along. I'm going to be on the radio? Right now. Oh, brilliant. What do I have to do, then? Walk this way. Oh, great. This is Andrew Webster, who's our engineer for the day. Hi, Randy. And what I'm going to ask you to do in a minute is to put some headphones on, yeah. and you'll hear the radio. OK. And you'll be talking to Glenn Thompson, who's doing the Saturday morning show. Oh, Glenn, yeah. And he'll introduce us. And then you're on the radio. It's that simple. Brilliant. So, a set of headphones for you. OK. And a set for me. Glenn Thompson! Hear the music okay? Yeah. Hello over to our radio car now and hello to Erica Longdon. Erica. Yes, Glenn, hello. I'm out on Cliff Marsh to deliver an Invictogram to Neil Buchanan because he's always wanted to be on the radio. Has he? Neil, hello. Nice yeah, to Yeah, hello, talk Glenn. To you. It's uh, Neil Buchanan here. Uh, yeah, I fancy being uh, a bit of a DJ or a broadcaster or I've got reporting, you know, now's the amount of work and everything. Well, you're broadcasting live on the air now, Neil. Is there anybody you'd like to say hello to in particular? You're live on the air. Yeah, I would, yeah. I'd like to say hello to Dawn, Kim and Harry and tell Dawn I'll sort her out when I get back home. OK, Glenn, now you know we present the card, the Invictogram, as a souvenir to prove that Neil's been on the radio. Brilliant. And you know the final thing you have to do if you're going to have a career in radio? What's that? You've got to sign off properly with your name, where you are, and who you're working for. Oh, fine. Right then. Uh, this is Neil Buchanan signing off for Invicta Radio here at the Thames Estuary. Over. Goodbye, Neil, and make sure it keeps warm, Erica. I'm sure he will, Glenn. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend yourself. Brilliant. That's it. Oh, thanks very much. Hey, this is smashing. Look, come on, you chaps, this is ridiculous. Look, didn't you notice the crazed look in his eye? He's gone a bit mad. Now, come on, this is silly. Tablets, but how are we going to get him to take them? Well, he's like smacked his... Uh, um, John! Oh, this is incredible. Oh, oh, you're laughing. I thought he was that oh, when he said he'd gone a bit bonkers. Oh, he's gone completely no. off his tree. Oh, he came in here, trust me, up and surrounded me with gingerbread men. Oh, oh no, 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 that, that is beyond a joke. Drastic remedies for drastic situations. Oh. 
Great. Well, it's no good taking it out on the gingerbread men, Maisie. Ah. It's not their fault. You see, look, we take the currenty eyes out and we replace them with zinc tablets. Oh. You'll never notice the difference. But I see what you mean. Brilliant. Hey, I say, we don't happen to know what the maximum dosage is, do oh, we? Oh, gingerbread. Let's have it two packets. I wish you'd do something about those squeaky boots, Private Williams. Bad news, men. They brought in reinforcements and a right bunch of barbarians they look too. Men, this is going to be a wild frontier. They call the Emerald Land And I remember my hometown Before the wars began We got found in a sea of rage The victims you have seen You'll never hear them sing again The forty shades of green We're going back
here somewhere. Yes, look, he's been here. There's the evidence. Oh, where do you think he's gone? Oh, I know. He's gone through the tunnel to Mr. Patel's to get some more gingerbread men. Reinforcements. Oh, we must stop him. <gasps> Oh, sorry, I was a bit late with your coffee, Chad. Oh, I got a story. bit tied up, you see. Well, I mean, actually, I mean really tied up. You don't oh, mean, love you. I really got... Uh, don't, don't panic, but we think Martin's escaped and got down to Mr. Patel's, but Maisie and I are going down there to head him off. OK, then, Hazel. Oh, James, listen, dear, is there anything you would like while we're down? I noticed we were running a bit short of milk. Half a pound of jelly beans. Half a pound of jelly beans. Great, those two are on the case, so I think I'll leave them to it. Hey, listen, what's the most unusual disco you've ever been to? Unusual? Yeah. Uh, I did one in France, a great big Roman amphitheatre, open air thing that held about 50,000 people. It was crazy. Cool, that sounds amazing. Oh, How did they hear brilliant. the music? Well, they had massive, great big speakers. It was so loud, you couldn't go, like, within 10 feet of them. I should hope so. Because I'll tell you what, I went somewhere really interesting last yeah. week, which I thought would have been a great place for a disco. It's called Wookie Have you ever heard of it? Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Down in Somerset. Yeah. So down on the M4, I think it yes. is, in through Bath and out the other way. Anyway, what it is, is it's a load of caves. Yeah. And it's the most... Oh, it's a big cave. Yeah, isn't it? People always think that caves are, are small little places. And this place is like a cathedral. It's over 100 feet high. 100 feet? Yeah, cool. really big. Yeah, I'm really enjoying myself. Yeah, it's really slippery as well. Yeah, go easy down here. It's like a big adventure playground, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And you can do everything. You can climb, you can swim. Wiggle. Get muddy. Yeah. Really muddy. It's the best muddy. bit, isn't it? Getting muddy. Yeah, you've got to be fairly careful, though, because it can be can be a bit dangerous. It's a big hole underneath you. Yeah, I saw but that. But if you take care, which I think you do, it's, it's, it's just good fun. Yeah. Down here. Do all the things you're not really allowed to, like get muddy. Whee! Whee! Oh, it's good and squelchy here. <laughs> oh, no, it's a little pond. Yeah, well, it's not a little pond, actually. That's a river, the main river in the cave. And that's about 60, 70 feet deep there. We, we can't really go any further, can we? So I suppose we'd better turn back. Well, we... No, we, we could go further. There's, there's one way. But you've got to hold your breath. What do you mean, hold your breath? Well, you see this line? Yeah. Well, it goes all the way underwater up to the next section of cave that's full of air like this. Well, there's something on this line. I've caught something. <laughs> big fish. Yeah, it feels like it's a really big one. It's fighting back. Is it light? Yeah. What's that? Oh, well, this is an underwater spaceman coming around here. Look at that. What is that? That's a cave diver. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at him! Wow! Where have you come from? I've just swam round from the, the last chamber. I don't understand. What do you mean, last chamber? Oh, well, I'll, I'll draw you a little diagram on my slate. Um, what happened is when the river was forming, um, it left a U underneath the local water table, which is now full of water. So what you get, in fact, is um, solid rock like this. And then there's still a passage, and then it comes up into air again, there. And this section's still full of water. So you can only get there by diving? So you can only get there by diving. 
What's it like underneath that, then? It's a bit murky. To begin, well, on the way through first, it's like swimming through a green fog. It all coming towards you, little particles of silt floating down, carried through by the river. Um, and as you swim by, you stir up the visibility in this, all this muddy water. So you can hardly see anything? So you hardly see anything, and that's why we lay a guideline, so that on our return, we can feel our way along. You've got an awful lot of equipment, haven't you? What's all that? This is, um, this is sort of my life support system, so that I can, I can stand having a failure when I'm actually on a dive, so that I carry four lights, um, just in case the batteries run out of one or, or one of them floods, I've still got lights that will work. Left, I've yeah. got two valves just in case one goes wrong, um, and two cylinders of air, so that, again, if one valve goes wrong and it renders one cylinder useless, I can still breathe off the other. And what's that hissing noise? That hissing noise is um, a little pressure release valve on my first stage. And is that a very special suit you're wearing? Yeah, this is a dry suit to, to keep me bone dry. Keeps you a lot warmer and gives you a lot more buoyancy in the water. And have divers always been wearing that sort of thing then? Well, they started out actually. You know those big hard hats? Have you seen those in the old films? The big brass helmets? Oh, yeah. The big yeah, yellow grey things, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Well, they're the solid brass. And the first people ever to, to go cave diving actually went cave diving here in Wookiee Hole about 50 years ago. The very be, first people to go cave yeah, diving, right here. Penelope. They went right here. Cool, that's exciting. And they went in the really old fashioned deep sea divers gear, the big brass helmets and lead boots that looked like something out of a Frankenstein film. And they, they walked. On the bottom? Yeah, they sort of really slow trudge through the mud, just into complete unknown. They were incredibly brave in those days. How did they get up again? Well, they, they had sort of little, like pig's bladders, like make, you make bagpipes out of. Yeah. And when they were down deep, they used to blow these up, and these would lift them up like inner tubes, like sort of blowing an inner tube up when you're underwater. Sounds a bit frightening to me. Well, Listen, if I wanted to get into caving, how would I go around doing that? Well, there are lots of caving clubs. You know, a bunch of people have got together to do it. And probably the easiest way to find that out is just to go along to the library and say, you know, hey, where's my local caving club? I think I could really get into this. Should yeah. we go off and do some more? Yeah, well, they've got all the gear, so let's go. OK. Are you were coming, Rob? No, I'm going to swim back around the same way as I came in. It's a okay. lot easier. See you later, then. Sure. See you. The nice thing about, about most caves, like Wookiee, the big clear caves, are that it's like swimming through a green fog on the way in. You get underneath and all of a sudden it's very easy to move. All you've got to do is, is to put, put a little bit more power in one fin and you'll roll to one side. It's a bit like flying. It's very easy to go up and down. You just swim over the top of cliffs and look down through the water at, at, at the floor below, which might be 10 metres or so and you can just swim on down there and likewise you come to, a, to the base of a cliff and you, you just, because of your weightlessness, you can just pull your way up it. You can't hear much apart from the, the gush of air coming out from the exhaust ports and your demand valve and then that goes cascading up towards the ceiling and then it makes a, a loud rumbling noise as it hits the solid rock and tries to force its way up into little pockets um, where eventually it will re-dissolve back into the water and be carried out. The, the main reason I'm so heavily involved with cave diving, I think, is the pioneering and the exploration um, side of it. It's so attractive to be able to push fairly remote and extreme environments. It's still possible to, to go into places where no one's been before. God, and it looked fantastic, didn't it? Would you, would you do something like that? Yeah, I could do. I could try some mixing down there, couldn't I? Um, oh, I don't think you probably could down there, right, right down there. I meant the cave diving, you know. Oh, the diving. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah. It's quite interesting, all that helmet. You're everything. not allowed to actually go down diving unless you've had two years caving experience. Two years. Yeah, because I'd love to have gone down, but they. Um, I was going to say, why did you go no, down there? Well, <laughs> I'd love to have gone, but they said you can't unless you've had two years caving experience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you ever been caving? Ever, ever even gone caving? Never. Never, ever. I've only been once and it was fantastic. Yeah? yeah. Listen, Wicked. don't you think that cave would have been a good place for a disco then? Definitely. And you could have done some mixing, I suppose, Definitely. in the cave, but not under the water. You'd have won the World Championship then, wouldn't you? Good idea. I feel like the Scarlet Pimpernel, isn't it? You know, they seek him here, they seek him there. But we knew we were on the right track. 
We now know he's bought up Mr. Patel's entire supply of gingerbread men. Mrs. Agra Luke, the Mark of Matt. Oh, sentry guard. Did you hear it? Eh? What? I've just been on the radio. Oh, oh we've got really other like things it. to think about this morning, Neil. You haven't seen Martin on your travels, have you? No. Where's Dawn? Uh, she's in the lounge, oh. dear. Oh, uh, Neil! Oh. Doorbell. Yeah, I'll shut that out later on. Maisie, do you mind coming home with me, love? I need your support. No problem, my zinc men and I are at your back. See what you mean? Oh, yeah, you like that. Right. Come here. Come here. What is all this about, eh? Well, I said you always wanted to be on the radio, didn't you? Yeah, but not when I was out on the marshes, you nutter. Hey, I tell you what, though, it was brilliant, did you hear me? Well, now at the time, Neil, I was trussed up on the kitchen table surrounded by gingerbread men. Come again? Well, you know said Martin was going loopy? Yeah. He's gone completely bonkers. He marched into the kitchen with his gingerbread men, said they were soldiers, tied me out on the kitchen table, put them all around me, said they were guarding me. Oh, he does take things a bit too far, doesn't he? So that's why there's a gingerbread man out at the front door. Oh, it's probably guarding the front door. Oh, the landlord's going to love that, isn't he? A gingerbread front doorbell. Well, it's better than nothing. Yeah, all right, I'm working on it, aren't I? Anyway, I think it might be the sound that offended the landlord, not so much the look of it, you know. So I figured out maybe we could record a new sound. Yeah. Hey, where's that tape recorder of Harry's, the old one? I think it's in the kitchen. I'll get it. OK. Right, Chad, show me what you meant again. What you... Well, he's not there. Now, this needs thinking about logically, Neil. You see, I think he would think that we would think that he'd be hiding in the most obvious place, which is, of course, the cellar. So, I think he would think that we would think that he would know that we would think that he was hiding in the most obvious place, which is, of course, the cellar. What do you think, son? I think you should try the cellar. Oh, good thinking. Is it all clear, Williams? All right, OK, out you get, men. Oh, let's find the reinforcements. Come on, that. come on. Come on, yes, cable with those reinforcements, William. Right, come on. Jump, 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 step, 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 step. Oh, but there are only gingerbread. Gingerbread? These are the third Welsh Fusiliers. Oh, Mr Edwards, there you are. Should you not be thinking about getting home, Mr Edwards? Mrs Edwards is very worried about you, and I know she's got an awful nice hot milky drink for you. Careful, she may be a double agent. Oh, right, Edwards, unless you do exactly as I say this minute, the third Welsh Fusiliers get it. Uh, don't worry, Williams, I won't let them get your brother. He's gone completely loopy. Right there. <coughs> <coughs> New sound for doorbell demo tape, take one. Five, no, please, not 75. I can't go there again. Neil, 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 Neil! What? He's not going to go back without a fight. Where can I put him until I get Mrs Edwards? Stick him in the shed. Does it lock? Of course it locks. Oh, good. Uh, right, Edwards, Ooh. out that way, Bit. through that door, double quick, all right. the Welsh Fusiliers. Bye. Get up, go, 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 go. Hello. Hello, mate. All right. Hey, listen yeah. there. Well, you're around. You're an expert on sound, aren't you? What kind do you of. think? Kind of, yeah. What do you think would make a good sound for a doorbell? Well, have you thought about trying a guitar sound for a doorbell? That might be good. I had never thought of that. Well, Could we use one of yours? Yeah. Brilliant. Sure. Well, let's have a look then, mate. Yeah. Hey, look at these lined up. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, How many yeah. have you got all together? About 25. 25? Yeah. And, and why have you got these in your collection? Uh, What's special do. about these ones? some of my old favourites. Uh, this one here is uh, my oldest guitar. It's a 1959 Les Paul. I've had this for about 12 years, and it used to belong to uh, Peter Green. You know, Albatross, you know this no, tune? No, don't know it. Oh, yeah, I remember that yeah, one. You know yeah. This one? yeah. Um, want, do you use that guitar for recording? Yeah, I used it on uh, Parisian walkways as well, which was a gear that we had before. Oh. Do you know this one? Yeah. Brilliant. Love it. What about that one? I've seen you use that occasionally. Uh, this one is a 1955 Les Paul Jr. that used to belong to the guitarist from the Sex Pistols, Steve Jones. You know oh, right, yeah. yeah. What about the, that one? It looks like a bit of a jazz guitar. Yeah, that's uh, an old uh, ES5 Gibson that I got from Greg Lake. From Emerson, Lake and Palmer. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. an old band, that. That's right. Pink one? Strat? The pink one's an old uh, 1961 salmon pink Strat, like the Shadows used to play. Yeah, now I've seen a lot of guys play Strat, and yet they all seem to make it sound different. How come? Well, different players can make guitars sound completely different just by the way they touch the strings and the fingering techniques and all that. It's down to the individual player. And I notice you've got a lot of old guitars here. Has that got anything to do with the sound? Uh, yeah, well, older guitars tend to sort of mellow with age, you know, as they? as they get older, they get a warmer tone, so oh. I, I like them. What about the little one? Is that a bit of a, a joke guitar or a challenge? 
Antarctica. Yeah, that's really just like a novelty. I picked it up in Tokyo for about two bob, you know, it was sort of sitting in a shop there. But you can't really play it properly. What do you think is a good age to start? Because is that an ideal guitar for a starter? Uh, no, because if you look at the neck on this guitar, it's a very short scale neck. It's a whole miniature guitar, and this is the proper length of a neck. So even if you're very young and you've got small fingers, you should learn on the proper scale neck. Sure. And then when you move on to other guitars, it's always going to be the same. Now I'm thinking of buying a new Alecky. Can you give me some tips? Because the service isn't usually very good in the shops, is it? No, the trouble is, what they do is with kids when they go and they put them through a bunch of effects and they sound great even though it's yeah. only a cheap guitar. You should pick a guitar up and play it without even plugging it into the amplifier and if it sounds good then, then it's going to sound better when you plug it if in. If it sounds good when it's bad, it's exactly. going to sound great. That's right. What about the acoustic? Is that, uh, is that part of your collection? Well, that was like a present, but the thing about that is I haven't got anywhere to put this. Yeah. As you said, I've got a vast collection yeah. of guitars, so... Uh, I was thinking, You're not you know, giving it away, are you? Well, I was thinking about it, actually. You're joking! Well, no, I, I couldn't take that off you, mate, because I've already got an acoustic. But I know someone who will. Did you hear that, then? Gary Moore, the man himself, is going to give away his guitar. So what I'm going to do, if, if it's a Gary Moore guitar, we're going to have to have a Gary Moore competition. I'll think of a, a, a question to ask you. Um, I know, obvious one, isn't it? What was the old, famous band that Gary used to be in before he formed his own band? Quite an easy one, so you've got to, you've got to cast your mind back. I promise you I won't enter the competition because I fancy that guitar myself. If you think you know the answer, stick it on a postcard and send it to me, Neil, here at the house and just put on the bottom guitar competition. It helps Kim sort the mail out. And send it to the usual address. That's number 73. P.O. Box 73, Maidstone, Kent, ME 156RS. What was Gary's old band? Good luck with that competition. Right, doorbell. Give us a few little effects in that. I know you just don't play straight on stage. You've got some tricks lined up. Yeah, I up, use some different you? sound effects. Let's hear like some tricks. Got, this is like a police siren. <laughs> So that's one of them. And I've got this one which is sort of like a, a Honda 500. <laughs> Right. Got another one. Uh, well, this is one like it's a kind of like a dive bomber effect. Go on. You just hit one of these harmonics. <laughs> Realistic. Have you got anything that, that might be a bit more doorbellish? Well, I've got these harmonics which might sound like a bell if you uh, play it like. Brilliant! That's the one. You the play time. it, I'll record it. Let me know when you're rolling. Uh, now then, Mr. Edwards, we don't want any more trouble, do we? <laughs> uh, you're quite safe in there. Let us out, you she devil! Oh, no, no, no. Mrs. Edwards will be out just in a minute to come to you, Mr. Edwards. Right, Williams, I've got a dangerous mission for you. I want you to get behind enemy lines and create a diversion. Stop snivelling, man. It's the king and country. Martin! Martin, dear, it's your Hazel. Can you hear me? Shh! Don't say a word. Why don't you come out, Martin? I've got something nice for you to eat. Careful, men. Maybe a trick. Soldiers only eat iron rations. Oh, well, not exactly iron rations. More zinc rations. Right, men. After three. One, two, three. Oh! Where are they? I'm right behind you, dear. Ah! There. See, I've got your favourite, Martin. Now, eat it all up. It'll, it'll make you feel better. But that's Corporal Llewellyn. It'll do you good. You expect me to bite the head off a Welsh fusilier? You must think I'm mad. So, so here it is, then. The first showing of the new doorbell sound, courtesy okay. of Gary Moore. Fantastic. It's a bit big to put outside the front door. Besides, it'll get nicked, Neil. No, stupid. You just connect it up to the doorbell, don't you? Oh, the sound. Yeah, just the sound. Oh, the sound. Oh, oh, my nose. Listen, this is, this is beyond a joke. Listen, one of you two's going to have to come out. We're, we're, we're trying to get Martin to eat those zinc tablets. We need help. Oh, number 26 on your list, is it, Maisie? The oh, forget the list, Neil. Son, this is an emergency. Well, you need something more than zinc to put him right, isn't yeah. it? He's going to need some sort of therapeutic mm. treatment. Something calming is what he needs. Hey, why don't you get him to try painting? I always do that to calm me down. He, he can paint can. the fence. And I can take it no. off the list. Oh, you come no, on, come on. No, no I, was, I was thinking more of sort of landscape painting. You know, artistic, little berry, smock and all that. Have you got any cake? No, why? Well, some of us down in the cellar thought you might have a special cake for us. I'm sorry, I haven't, no. Oh, can I have a drink then? Yeah, what do you want? Milk. Come on, you lot. I want orange. I want cherry coke. I want Tizer. I, I want lemonade. What? What's going on? There, there, Martin. You don't really think I'm the enemy anymore, do you? How is he, Hazel? See for yourself, love. He's 
worse. We've had this idea. What we think he needs is calming treatment, like painting. Painting what? Painting the fence. Well, anything's worth a try, Dawn. When Neil says it always works for him. Here we are, Mr. Edwards. We brushy washy and the wee painty wainty. See what Maisie's brought you, Martin. Wouldn't you like to do some painting? Good or funny, Ken's. Martin Edwards, I am not up to here with this stupid behaviour of yours now. Just pull yourself together, get that paintbrush, and start painting the fence this minute. Yes, dear. Seth, there's not going to be any left for me. All right, all right, now listen, I want your opinion on this. This is the sound for the new doorbell, courtesy of Gary Moore, the guitarist. See what you think. That's brilliant! In a good, eh? Yes. Brilliant. Now, I was thinking of, of this for the actual doorbell itself. You know, you press it and it goes down. Oh, don't all react at once. No? Fine, all right. How's about this, then? Tap on the door, the person walks up, turns it and it goes... Listen. Oh, hello, everyone, by the way. Uh, your idea about Martin painting the fence seems to have worked. He snapped out of it. What about this idea? Doorbell. Great idea, Neil. Oh, Dawn. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Charles. Oh, yeah. You haven't finished it, have you? I have. And, what's more, I've written you all a special number 73 poem as well. Could we hear them? Yeah. Fantastic. Is every everyone sit down? Come over yeah. here. I'll get over we'll here. we a drink, aren't we, eh? Yeah, sit down as well. That's it. Everyone ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, this is written after another poem by Macefield called Sea Fever, which begins, I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea and the sky. So this is number, number 73 fever. <laughs> I must go to 73 again, but I'm feeling rather shy. I keep on going past the door. It's time that I drop by. For there's bands there and the tea on and Samantha waiting and a cute smile on Harry's face and, of course, Dawn skating. <laughs> I must go to 73 again. It's cosy there inside. There's visitors in sleeping bags and breakfast being fried. And Neil is thinking of a job. He'll have to keep on trying. Yeah. Yeah, all right. And Kim has cut a record, which I hope you'll all be buying. Yeah. I must go to 73 again, to the happy, carefree life. Except when Martin's arguing with Hazel, that's his wife. <laughs> Except when Mr Thingy, landlord, draws up in his rover. Uh. Except, oh dear, the duster muster when the breakfast's over. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant! Yay. And now, I think there's one you've been waiting for, Dawn. Thanks, Charles. Right. There, we go. there we go. I've done my best. This is for you. I dreamt about him all last night. While all the day before, I walked around in such a dream I walked into a door. <laughs> for every time I think of him, it drives me really frantic. He's tall and dark and hunky. He's handsome and romantic. Wow. He gives my tummy butterflies, which puts me off my toast. My head is full of thoughts of him. It's him I love the most. And if he lived in Newfoundland, I'd row the whole Atlantic. He's tall and dark and hunky. He's handsome and romantic. <laughs> I worry. Does he love me back? Each day I'm getting thinner. But he could cure me overnight with candlelight and dinner. My love for him has grown so much, it's bigger than gigantic. He's tall and dark and hunky, he's handsome and romantic. I love him more than Alistair Burnett, who reads the news. <laughs> I love him from his toupee to his number 10 size shoes. <laughs> I have to say it once again, don't think that I'm pedantic. He's tall and dark and hunky, he's handsome and romantic. Oh. Oh. Well, it seems to have done the trick. He's calmed down, hasn't he? Mm. Mm. Martin, dear, why don't you show us what you painted?
but I'm glad you rang in because there's something I want to talk to you about. Yeah, it's tonight. I don't, I don't think I should come. Well, look, I can't talk bosh, I can't ballroom dance, and I've no idea which knife and fork to pick out first. It's not that, it's a disco buff. Why didn't you tell me that? You would have saved me an awful lot of worry. Th there's still one problem. I don't know what to wear. You're wearing a dinner jacket? Yeah. OK, well, I'll see you at 8.30. Yeah, bye. John, dear, was that for me? Uh, no, it was Ninian. Why are you expecting a call? Oh, Mr Butch said you would phone and find out if we'd done everything on that list. I can't even find the list. You know, Hazel, this painting's really therapeutic. I feel much better now. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Martin. You know, I never realised what a talented painter you are. Mm. I mean, your brush technique is very good. Yes. I mean, would you like to try another subject now? Well, yes, I think I'm through my gingerbread period oh, now. That's a relief. How about doing a landscape? Well, I think I'll stick with this alpine scene for now. Ninian's oh. wearing a dinner jacket. That's what I'm going to wear. I think that's a great idea. This old one I found in the loft should do. Oh, it must have been up there for ages. It's dust. Oh, <coughs> I wonder if it's a good fit. Yeah, that's not too bad. I think that'll do quite nicely once it's been brushed up a bit. I wonder whose it was. What's this? Oh, look. It's an eight-legged, black-bottomed plastic spider. Must have been David Taylor's. Must have been a bit slimmer in those days. Oh, dear. Who could have put that list? Oh. Right then, that's the doorbell fixed it up. Now to connect it. Oh, good old son. If I could only find my list, I could take it off. I got it. That'll be him. Who? Mr. Birch. Oh, no, no, I don't want to speak to me. You answer it, Maisie. Me, me, it's your phone. Maisie. Hello? Oh, Mr. Birch. How lovely to hear from you. Yes, yes, this is Noel. Well, it's Neil, actually. Yeah, it's lovely to speak to you. I'm looking forward to meeting you as well. Yes, she is. She's standing here, right here by me. Yes, I'll put her on. Goodbye, Mr. Birch. Looking forward to seeing you. Is that interfering, old busybody Birch? Oh, I don't want to speak to you. Hello, Mr. Birch, yes. Yes, Mrs. McGonagall, yes. Well, actually, it's Mrs. McConaughey, yes. The last, yes, yes. Uh-huh. The, 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 the house, we're getting on like a house on fire. No, 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 not like a house on fire, no. But well, you know what I mean, mister. But, but the fence, you'll love the fence. It's been painted, yes. And, uh, and the, the, oh, the doorbell, the doorbell. Neil has fixed the doorbell. He's very good with his hands, very good. And he's bought a wig. Neil's bought a wig. Isn't that fantastic? No, he hasn't bought a wig. No, it's the thatch. Yes, the thatch is lovely. I can almost see it from here. It's very nice. And the projector. Oh, I've hidden that away. Yes, I've hidden that away for nobody will find it. There'll be no films in this house today. No. <laughs> Definitely no cartoons. And certainly not any Tweety Pie. The tunnel to Mr Patel's. <laughs> Don't worry, Tweety. I'll get you in somehow. <laughs> No, 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 they're not. Oh, the iguanas have been taken away by David Taylor. <laughs> we slip of the tongue here, Mr. But uh, Will there be anything else? Good. Uh, no, please feel free to call any time. And goodbye to you too, Mr. Butch. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, oh son. Oh, 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 what a shock. Oh, my uh, nerves are in front. Sorry, I didn't realise that. Don't be stupid. Nothing. Come back here. Listen, we've oh. just managed to con the landlord, haven't we? Oh. The heat is off, we've got a bit of space. Oh, not if you don't get that doorbell fixed, we haven't, Neil. Can't you stop, do you? I'm sorry, Maisie. son. Yes, dear. What do you think? 
Well, eh. Uh... Oh, it's lovely, John. Uh... Your minion's a very lucky boy. Oh, thank you, Hazy. Oh. Well, Hazel, I think we've done a really good job there. We have, haven't we, Martin? Ditto. I can't remember the last time we shared a hobby. What should we do next? Well, our back door needs a good coat of paint. No, no, I meant artistically. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, why don't we move on to portraits? That's a good idea. Well, why don't you paint me? Oh, all right then. So that's who you are. Why didn't you tell me in the first place? Come on, sit. Oh, Dawn. This is the mob whose birthday it is. Yeah, yeah, I know that, yeah. Why didn't you tell me? I've organised a special little treat for them. Yeah? Yeah. Charles! What's Charles! I've got a surprise! Yay! Oh, oh look at this! Whoa. That's what. Hey, I think. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Kai, Katie, Kevin, Georgina, Andrew, and Emma! Happy birthday to you! Well, well, fly all together, come on, Herman. Hey. Well done, yeah. well, oh, what, that's well, well done, mate. <laughs> right then. Well, I think if we ask Neil very nicely, he might do the dust master. But very nicely. Yeah. Please, Please, Neil, nice. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <Not> uh, <laughs> come on, you lot. That's it. Uh, Charles, uh, could I interest you in doing the dust Oh, no, no, not at all. OK, come. Dawn, oh, no. get Chad, eh? OK, right, sure thing. Welcome to this week's... Duster Muster! Oh, Negative, evolutionary, clean up, revolutionary. Don't pay me kneel and out, man of plastic sanitary. Have your squeezy, grab your butt, kick your tail, jimmy to the Duster Muster, Duster Muster, Duster Muster! Yes! Yay! Now to welcome for our guest, can I have your name, please, sir? Chad Jackson. Chad, and your name, please, sir? Charles Thompson. Can I call you Chaz? You Ch can. Chaz and Chad, eh? Oh, Without yeah. further ado, if you'd like to put on your little rubber gloves, put your peepers around your neck, I'll explain, explain the rules to you. The aim of the game is very simple. The aim of the game is not to be lumbered with the housework. You do this by answering some very, absolutely, very simple questions. If you get the question wrong, you get one of these household cleaning utensils. If you get the question right, your opponent gets given one of these. The person at the end with the most utensils has to go and clean the house. Right, without further ado, we'll see you get to answer the first question. We do this by having a little... Grow for the show. In you go, lads. This one. I think it was Chad, don't you? Oh, yeah. Was it Chad just about? OK, Chad, you get the first question to you. This round is actually called the Dirty Dozen, and it's over here, and this one's for the soap box. Chad, this is your question. You can't answer this one. What does an omnivore eat? Omnivore eats... <laughs> Grass. Uh, well, it eats just about, I suppose, yeah, it's everything, like everything. Yeah. That's for the soapbox, and that's like, oh, yeah, here it is. It eats everything, so I suppose grass counts at everything, doesn't it? Yeah. And for you, this one is for the a bucket. Chaz, this is your question. What fungus do you have on toast? Toast? Um, mm. Peanut Easy. butter fungus. No. I trust No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 It's on a time limit here. I count five seconds in my head. You can't count. Ah, shut up. <laughs> Chad, this is your question. This is for the yard brush. You've already stitched me up with the Invicta Grant. Uh, spell meringue. Meringue. M E R I N G U E. Brilliant! Yay! That's for the yard brush, so unfortunately, Chad, you get the yard brush. <laughs> And that peculiar little noise that I didn't actually make means we go on to the next round, which is an open round. Open questions, either of you can answer. Now, come on, lads, I think uh, Chaz is losing at the moment, isn't yeah. he? So if you get your whistles in your mouth, All the right. first one to blow their whistles or their peepers get to answer this question. First question, open question. This is the clean sweep round. What do you call the formations that hang down in a cave? <laughs> Who was it? Um, oh, it was him. Um, it was Chaz. 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 Stalactites. Stalactites is correct. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, Chaz, you get one of these put round your neck. After that nice poem I wrote for you, <laughs> well, no. there's no justice you in this line. Open <laughs> question. Either of you can answer. Oh dear. Right. Get your little thing in your mouth there. There you go. Uh, All right. Mm -hmm. Right. Ready? <laughs> what day follows Shrove Tuesday? Shrove Wednesday. <laughs> well, it's sort of. I'll throw this open to Chad. I'll throw this open to Chad. Shrove Tuesday. Uh, Shrove. Uh, Take the ash off. Ash, ash, ash Wednesday. Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. 
I think I'll give them one each for that. Yeah. Terrible yeah. performance, lads. Yeah. Right? Disgusting. Yeah. One each. Yeah. Open question, easy if you can answer. Get ready with your little peepers in your mouth here. I'll give you a bit of a mm -hmm. hand there. Mm -hmm. Ah, fine. What animals would you find in an equestrian event? <coughs> Horses. Chas. Horses, well done. So, ah. Charles, you get this. Very poor performance from Charles here. Open question, guys. Ah. <laughs> Well, that even peculiar little noise means that it's the end of the dust and muster. I think we have a loser here, don't oh, we? Definitely. Charles, definitely. unfortunately, mate, you have to go and do the housework. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but, Chad, this makes you this week's winner of the dust and muster. Yay. Yeah! Yay. That was the dust and muster. Purgative evolutionary, clean up revolutionary, dawn of Kim and Neil and Harry, manifestly sanitary. Grab your squeeze and grab your muff, shake your tail and shimmy to the dust and muster, dust and muster, dust and muster. Right, you lot, happy birthday, let's go have a party, let's go boogie with the band! Yay! Yay! Oh, man. That's it, off you go. Oh, eh, Neil! What? I little word in your shell like here, if you don't mind, son. Yes? Doorbell. Maisie? It's going to give me great pleasure to allow you to be the first to try the new doorbell. Oh, yeah! I know the reason you turn your back on things that you don't want to hear. Yeah. And I know this feeling I get from you when you try to so sincere oh. But I 